David. President, my question is for the Minister for Small Business. And Minister, I refer to the events sector and the many small businesses and suppliers in the events sector that have been hit hard by COVID. In other eastern sta seaboard states, exhibition and convention spaces are not being used for critically needed mass vaccination centres, freeing them up to enable the events sector to begin booking for events months ahead with certainty to help the events sector get back on its feet and to support the many city-based tourism operators and accommodation uh, services. By contrast, by contrast, in Victoria's case, our major exhibition centres are being used as mass vaccination centres, preventing security of booking for months ahead. And I therefore ask you, Minister, will you advocate as Small Business Minister on behalf of the sector for alternative sites for mass vaccination, perhaps in the suburbs, freeing up major events, uh, exhibition centres like the Melbourne Convention and Exhibition Thank Centre you. for... Mr. Paul I thank you, President, and I thank Mr Davis for his belated interest in our small business community. It feels like yonk since I've had a question. Um, so uh, this, is the, this, is, this, is a, this is a sector that, of course, we are all in... Uh, just shush a sec, Ms Crozier. Interjections. Oh, my Ms. God. All the time. Minister, to continue. Since midday. Ms, Ms Crozier. Thank you. Sorry, I should make that a point of order, President. Sorry? Interjections are disorderly. And could you call the House to order, please, so I can finish my thought? Somebody feed the high horse. <laughs> I beg your pardon. She's on a high horse. Members, yesterday wasn't acceptable. Today, we're going towards the same as yesterday, and it's not acceptable as well. So, members, I warn everyone in the chamber that anything else apart from listening and speaking in the chamber, I will be deal with the matter seriously. You all warned. Ms. Bulford. Uh, thank you, President. Um, now, as I was saying, it is uh, incredibly heartening to see our events sector uh, returning uh, to what it is that they do and love to do. We've supported the events sector in a whole lot of different ways with outdoor events through the warmer months and indeed some of the cooler days as well. Um, uh, there have been many thousands of grants provided uh, to support uh, businesses working in events uh, with critical support and Lifeline, the Working for Victoria program that I mentioned in my minister's statement just a few moments ago also has provided opportunities for people in the events sector to be getting back to work and to be indeed in employment and hosting activities and events while waiting for restrictions to allow a resumption of more normal trade. Um, now, we have, um, of course, an events framework that is... Um, that is uh, approving multiple events each week, like, and by multiple, I could probably um, provide the House with some, some sense of the numbers of approvals um, if that was of interest to members. Um, but so many events are kicking back into gear. We see the CBD uh, coming back to life, and yes, there's a way to go yet, but people in their workplaces are now gathering for events. Mr Davis might not be being invited to too many, but I think most of the rest of us are, and it's, and it's terrific to see, because the sound and light equipment, the rooms that are high, the catering. This is a really, really important part of our economy and it is a sector that has um, really uh, had um, significant challenges because the coming together of people has not been something that has been safe to do uh, when there have been cases in the community. And of course the opposition did want us to ignore the health advice throughout last year and put put the economy and indeed the health of Victorians uh, at greater risk. Um, that is not that that is not the, that is not the choice that is not the choice we made. Uh, but Victorian businesses are doing a terrific job uh, with their QR codes. They're doing a terrific job of rebuilding demand and responding to rebuilt demand. Um, and and people are and people are getting back to work and people are getting back to running their businesses, which is of course terrific. Mr. Davis. Asked about my 
uh, opinion or advocacy about where mass vaccination uh, sites ought to be. Like I think mass vaccination sites and access to the community for these things probably best left to the public health team and the health minister to continue looking after that Thank and you. running that. Mr Davis on the supplementary. Um, well, that's a disappointing answer from the minister. We went round the block, but actually not prepared to advocate. Minister, a recent article in the Australasian Special Events, a trade journal stated, Victoria arguably had the biggest impact on the exhibition and event industry as the whole state was essentially closed far longer than every other state and Victoria has been far slower reopening and resuming uh, any normality in attendance capacity. Minister, the article goes on to state we need to, def need to have a definite answer when the venues will reopen to full use as they are intended for the industry. So I ask, on behalf of the Victorian small businesses in the events sector, when will that be? Minister Pulford. Uh, thank you, President. Um, Victoria is, I believe, hosting crowds at events larger than at any other place in the world. So we are now up to 100% at seated venues. Um, there is uh, a, an approval process for, for those with um, uh, less than a thousand people, other, uh, another pathway for those with more than a thousand. We are having events with approval for up to a hundred thousand people to be in attendance. This isn't happening anywhere else in the world. And so I, so I, I know Mr Davis lives in some kind of strange land where the federal government will take responsibility for federal government responsibilities and somehow, you know, get everyone vaccinated. Um, you know, like I'm 47, I'm just sort of, you know, waiting patiently. Um, you might but, be 50 you get one, I, I hope to not be 50 before I get one. Um, I'll be there when it's when it's okay to do so, and I encourage all the over 50s to get to those venues and get Thank their you. vaccinations.